Wow, these moths are giant. These are Bunea onkino, the cabbage tree emperor moth. A very large species of moth from tropical Africa. And I've shown you them on my channel many times before, but never the entire life cycle. So let's change that for a moment and start where it all begins. It starts with eggs, of course. These eggs are hatching into little baby caterpillars. It's hard to believe something so small will eventually develop into a giant moth. Now, the first instar of these can be raised in airtight plastic boxes. If you've seen my other videos, you must be familiar with this method, surely. I've given them a mix of several host plants that the larvae themselves are able to choose their own favorite. Some of the plants you can give them in captivity are common ivy or Hedera helix, but also liquid umber or sweet gum, some types of prunus or cherry, and privet or lichostrum. That's straightforward, isn't it? If the caterpillars are comfortable, they will start feeding. It's hard to miss considering how much they eat. The first instar of this species is brown, with a black face and white hairs. They show social behaviors and travel and feed in small groups, under or on top of the leaves. This tropical African species like warmth, and it's recommended to raise them in summer or in a warm space. The first plant that they started feeding on was the ligustrum or the privet. Although they are polyphagous and can sometimes even switch between food plants if they feel like it. Once they've eaten enough food, the caterpillars will decide to shed their skins and then dramatically change their appearance. Let me show you. Wow, so this is the next instar. Suddenly they are black with white spines. How adorable. Their behavior is pretty much the same. Still feeding in groups. That's strength and numbers for you. One trick that helps to rear these caterpillars is by putting in a layer of paper tissue towels on the bottom of the rearing container that absorbs excess moisture and makes it easier to clean droppings. So this is the next instar. Suddenly they are black with white spines. How adorable. Their behavior is pretty much the same, still feeding in groups. That's strength and numbers for you. One trick that helps rear these caterpillars is putting a layer of paper tissue towels on the bottom of their rearing container that absorbs excess moisture and makes it easier to clean droppings. The first instar was eating privet, but for some reason instar 2 preferred sweet gum, so I used that as well from now on. Ah yes, just hurting my little caterpillar sheep. Enjoy the visual effect, I suppose, before we move on and see how they will grow into bigger moths. So fascinating. All right, people, so our Bunea are reaching instar number three. Let's have a look here, folks. Caterpillars are growing beautifully, but I'm convinced that they need a bigger and better home. And um, to be honest, they're really big to be in a small container now. So I will just take the leaf that they are sitting on and place it here in a bucket full of a lot of fresh branches of sweet gum tea can you, leaf. Can you guys see it? This is a big, big container for them. And in here I hope they will be happy. There you go. There you go. And there you go. Yeah, this is their new house. Take a look. It's 
really cool how African Saturnids often have these uh, big spines on their body. What's funny is the spines of some caterpillars are yellow and some of them are more white. I wonder what makes the difference. I guess that's just variation, no? Now I'm going to seal the container, not with a lid, but just with a bit of netting here that I put around it. So it gives them a nice amount of ventilation. There you go. Their new house. So far so good. Visibly they are getting larger and would soon once again shed their skins in order to reveal a dramatic change in appearance. Wow, now that's crazy. They are progressively becoming rather colorful. This should be the third instar. Noticeably they are still social and feeding groups. Very beautiful. At some point I move them to a bigger cage which is more appropriate for such large caterpillars. What I really like about insects is when they grow up, you can see them go through all these life stages and just their appearance just changes so radically, you know? It's like every few weeks they're a totally, entirely new animal. So we're making progress and that's great. At this point they are getting kind of big, so I sort of decided to move them to a bigger cage, which is more appropriate. Here is instar number 4. Now they are starting to become significantly larger. This episode is going fast by the way. I intended it to be a long moth cycles video. But I am leaving to the country Brazil soon to research butterflies and moths there. So I didn't really have the time anymore to make one of my classic long videos, so enjoy your short life cycle instead. While Instar number 4 is impressive, I really like, um, I really feel like I should show you the final Instar now. Get ready, Instar number 5 is coming. Do you like it people? I think these caterpillars are quite fascinating. Now on my channel we've seen a lot of caterpillars in many colors, shapes, sizes and forms, but these colors are kind of special to me. They are black with these edgy spines, I love it. Anyway, it looks like they're approaching the fifth instar pretty soon. Uh, you can see they're about to shed their skin, so I think it's time to move on and show you the final instar, considering this is one of my shorter videos, so let's move on. Oh my god, this is instar number 5, the final instar. And in the final instar the caterpillars can grow to large sizes. Interestingly they do show a lot of variation. For example, there are caterpillars with white spines, or with yellow spines. It seems to be a little bit random, but there are other variations as well. Can you see the difference here? I like variation in caterpillars to be honest. Did you know there is even a more rare red color morph of caterpillars? Unfortunately I did not have any caterpillars in my brood that had the red form. But it's certainly possible if you raise them and you're lucky enough. Just a fun fact for you. What's really cool is the variation in the larva. Can you see it? So some of them have white spines and some of them have yellow spines and the variation seems to be totally random. That's interesting, don't you think? I thought it was. This species is reported in Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, Ghana, Togo, 
Cameroen, Gabon, de Dominican Republic of Congo, Malawi, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Swaziland and possibly even more countries in tropical Africa. Now the species is called the cabbage tree emperor because one of their favorite food plants in Africa is called spiny cabbage tree or Cusonia spicata. They also feed on bauhinia, a relative of clover and peas, known as orchid tree, but also acacia, false acegai or measa lanceolata, dachyodis edulis or African pear, croton and more. In captivity they can also feed on a lot of plants, in fact, even those not native to Africa, like cherry, common ivy, sweet gum and many more. Privet too. At this point the caterpillars are approaching maturity and soon they will be fully grown. My goal is to make a moth cycles episode on this species too someday, if I have the time. But since I'm traveling to the rainforest in Brazil soon, this video will be shorter, but it will be nice for my fans who love shorter content instead of the long videos. When the caterpillars are fully grown, they will leave the host plants. Now this species, it pupates underground. They do not spin a cocoon, unlike a lot of other Saturnidae species. In captivity, it's possible to let them pupate in a container with moist paper tissue towels. In the wild, they will burrow into the soil and pupate there. Pupa remain dormant in the dry season and moths emerge from the ground in the monsoon season. The pupa of this species have a very thick shell and can remain dormant for months, or even years if the conditions are not right. They are waiting for humid warm conditions. After keeping them in substrate for several months, you can expect the moths to finally come out. Guess who has come out, people? Take a look! Ta-da! Our first cabbage tree emperor moth. There it is! Bunea Okino. The cabbage tree emperor moths are finally coming out. The moths can have an incredibly large wingspan of over 16 centimeters or 160 many millimeters. They have two beautiful yet intimidating eye spots as well. In captivity these moths can be somewhat difficult to pair because they emerge from their pupa quite sporadically so you have to be really lucky to have a male and female out at the same time I suppose. The caterpillars of this moth are eaten in Africa making them edible insects. They are prepared by roasting them or sun drying them and often added to stews and soups. They seem to have one to three flights per year depending on the local microclimate. They are associated with Central African rainforests. A beautiful insect, isn't it? Well, I for one am proud of the fact that I managed to rear them in captivity. And I do hope you have enjoyed the show. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Here it is. One of our first African cabbage tree emperor moths. And we raced it together in this video. Is she not beautiful? I think so. This is a really lovely species. Yay! We did it everyone! We did it! Look at those beautiful eye spots, huh? That is incredible! The, Af the African Cabbage Tree Emperor Moth Bunea Alkino is a species I always wanted to raise in captivity and I guess we did it, so I am satisfied! Now it's become a little bit of a short video that's because soon I'm going to travel to the rainforest in Brazil to study butterflies and moths there in the wild. So I really didn't have much time to edit the rest of this video. And in fact, I'm probably miss, uh, going to miss some of the moths that are going to eclose when I leave my home country. 
One thing I really want to do in the future is um, make an episode of my most popular web series called Moth Cycles about this species. It's probably going to happen sometime in the future, but not today. The timing is just not great. Uh, this short life cycle is all I can offer you right now. I don't have the time to make a long life, uh, life cycle. But I hope you enjoyed it regardless. I hope you enjoyed seeing the life cycle of this beautiful tropical insect. Really nice. Well, that was it, folks. Ciao, ciao. I am going to study butterflies and moths in the Brazilian rainforest soon. This channel helps to protect and conserve species in the wild. And therefore, I did not have enough time to make a long life cycle. This was supposed to be a long moth cycles video, but I did not have enough time to finish it. But who knows, maybe next year I can try again. My channel is demonetized by YouTube. When I upload videos, I do not make money from them, unfortunately. My channel is entirely dependent on tips and donations. And my free time, materials and equipment I use to make videos are crowdfunded. Consider donating today and help me produce more videos in the future with awesome butterfly and moth life cycles. With your support alone, I can make more of them. And the money I raise online, I use for education, conservation, butterflies of moths and more. This channel works together with real research and breeding facilities, real entomologists and science, and crowdfunds conservation and education targeted at the biology of insects, and even international travel and expeditions to study rare species. Consider joining the moth army today. This channel is constantly growing bigger. You can support us via Patreon, PayPal and other means in the description. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.